Welcome back. The St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College Performing Arts Society, PAS, will be featuring at the Peace Memorial Hall from Friday 11th November to Saturday, that Sunday 13th, a play entitled The Joys of Sin. Let's hear more from Jeremy Richardson. We are the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College Performing Arts Society. We are a school-based school that consists of approximately 162 members in six divisions, namely drama, modeling, choir, poetry, backstage and dance. The main attraction for the 11th, 12th and 13th of November 2016 at the Peace Memorial Hall by the Performing Arts Society of Pass is the stage play The Joys of Sin. This year our play will be taking place at the Peace Memorial Hall at 8 p.m. on Friday the 11th, Saturday the 12th and Sunday the 13th of November. This play will co consist of every different aspect of the performing arts including dance, drama, modeling, choir, and poetry. You really, really can play that card, girl? It's not my fault you can't jump, Ants. Me and your child? Yes, you give me a perfect, perfect angel. <laughs> the monster is? Don't call my son a monster. Do not call my son a monster. That ought the man. Maybe if you had given me more children, I would have more things to spend my time on. M more children? Let me stop you there. First, when I met you, Mavis, it was a nice, shaped Coca-Cola bottle, fresh out the fridge. But now, like a big, fat, what, this two liter Pepsi bottle. It not look good. Anybody in the right man you watch, aren't you? Check yourself. Over the years, the Performing Arts Society has performed different acts of talent at the National Drama Festival, especially dance. <laughs> Also on all three nights, the past models will take the stage. And she said all she wants, she's a fantastic, she don't have me, she bubble round. Go down, go down, go down, down. She got that tight, tight grip that won't let me go. I got secrets, she won't let me know. Every time she moves, it's a different flavor, it's a different kind of flow. And all she wants, cause she knows the game too. Oh, so if you could wind and start to show me, take it down, let me know. And of course, pass would not be passed without the pass choir. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! One, go! Don't come back! I won't cry. I'll be fine. Don't come back at any time you're ready and you're ready, you're free to go. Don't come back. No matter make the door, hit your way, the good Lord split you. Don't come back. IKTV will be there for two nights to bring to you a full review of the performance of the Performing Arts Society, who will be taking the stage at the Peace Memorial Hall from the 11th, 12th and 13th of November 2016 under the National Drama Festival 2016. The shows begin at 8 p.m. each night. I am Jeroni Richardson reporting for your IKTV News Update. See you there. Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Ralph Gonsalves has announced that St. Vincent and the Grenadines will, as of January 1st, 2017, make it illegal to catch or kill sea turtles or disturb their nest. Dr. Gonsalves spoke to the plans of the pending new law on Tuesday at an event in Kaliakwa held to officially hand over fisheries equipment and machinery to the fisheries centers across the state. 
Dr. Gonzalez also said his government is doing a lot of education in schools, adding that while there is a conservation challenge with one species of turtle in local waters, his government will protect all four species that live here. Under the current law, sea turtles are protected species in St. Vincent, with the opening season running from August 1st to February 28th. But during the open season, it is illegal to catch, sell or have in one's possession undersized turtles or their shells. November 5th, 2016 was commemorated all around the world as World Tsunami Awareness Day. This is being done for the first time to raise public awareness of the deadly threat posed by tsunamis and to share innovative approaches to reducing risk. The UN General Assembly designated November 5th as the annual day for spotlighting tsunami risk. This worldwide event is supported, supported by the government of Japan and is used as an opportunity to showcase good practices related to tsunami. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, is currently involved in a Tsunami Smart Schools and Communities project in collaboration with the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, CADIMA, and the Seismic Research Center, SRC, with funding from the European Union through CADIMA's country directed funds. Through this project, the National Emergency Management Organization will work with six schools, three on mainland St. Vincent and three in Union Island, to develop tsunami hazard plans. Union Island will be used as a pilot community to develop, to develop tsunami plans, evacuation procedures for the two primary and secondary schools, along with signage throughout the community and a mapping of possible scenarios for tsunamis. The project will also be piloted in the Rose Place community through a partnership with the Universal Rastafari Community Organization. Minister of Information Camila Gonzalez, in responding to a question asked in Parliament last Friday, said that the government has indicated its intent not to proclaim the 2003 Act, but to pass a new Freedom of Information Act. After that 2008 meeting in Grenada, it was agreed that HIPCA would produce a suite of ICT-related legislation for eventual adoption across all the 15 beneficiary countries. That's all the independent CARICOM states plus the Dominican Republic. The suite of legislation, HIPCA legislation, includes both a harmonized Freedom of Information Bill and a Data Protection and Privacy Bill. In 2013, this is after the 2008 meeting, in 2013, the Ministry of Legal Affairs received substantially finalized versions of the suite of legislation from HIPCA which was disseminated to the ministries with responsibility for information and ICT, because at that time, information and ICT had different ministers. The minister said that the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines was ahead of the OECS in developing freedom of information legislation. Expenditure for the year 2016 in the section related to the Ministry of Economic Planning, Sustainable Development and so on, page 147, says we will submit a suite of ICT legislation, the electronic filing rules and regulations, the electronic communication bill, data protection and privacy bill, electronic evidence bill, electronic crimes bill, and the freedom of information bill to cabinet by June 2016 for approval. So to suggest, as the question suggests, that there was some delay in enacting the 2003 legislation um, in proclaiming it. It's quite clear from the beginning of the year that we said we would be bringing new freedom of information legislation coming out of the HIPCA, the HIPCA harmonized legislation. The Department of Labor commenced a training workshop in which representatives from various government entities will be learning more about labor market information which began yesterday, Monday, November 7th to Thursday 10th at the e-government center in the Clico building from 8.30 a.m. daily. The workshop on labor market information and its use in policy planning is being organized by the CARICOM Secretariat under the 10th EDF project, which deals with the establishment of labor market system for the proper management of the regime for free movement of skills within the CSME. It will bring together stakeholders from various government ministries and departments and statutory bodies that are involved in the production, analysis and dissemination of labor market data. 
The main purpose of the training is to provide the stakeholders with the necessary knowledge and understanding of labor market information and its use in policy and planning. The sessions will examine key, key labor market and sectoral policy issues, sources of labor market information and key indicators of labor market as well as training on the analysis of vacancy survey. The St. Vincent and the Grenadines Labor Market Information System was established in 2010 and is currently administered by the Department of Labor. In Parliament, Opposition Leader Honorable Arnim Eustace said that the new items added to the VAT list has nothing the standard of living for the vulnerable. $8 million, 11% increase in VAT revenue went on the wrong items and to harm those who could least afford it. I'm asking the government, I'm asking the Prime Minister in his capacity as Minister of Finance to review that situation. No. I did not regard it as a fair piece of legislation and I didn't take into account sufficiently the various aspects of our economy and the state of our economy but it brought revenue. Eight million dollars in additional revenue. Every time I look at the piece of legislation, I looked at it last night about three times. As I said, I was very, very torn because the arguments at both levels are very strong. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonsal said that some communities were added for health and wellness concerns. In addition to the revenue issue, very fundamentally was the health and wellness question, which we have been asked repeatedly on um, by PAHO, by CAFA, CARICOM. I just want to say that at the same time, that over the last three years, the rate of inflation in this country has been at the level of more or less zero. Zero, zero point one percent. So it's not a question that we're not in a situation of fuel inflation. But as always, as Minister of Finance, I have under review every year, indeed on an ongoing basis, the tax regime in the country and that is why from time to time you see we come with tweaking. More local news when we come back.